Uh, mm -hmm. Let me start with the question. Did you also notice that the world is becoming more predictable with every passing day? You know, um, Amazon predicts what products we want to buy. And Google predicts what ads would interest us the most. Facebook predicts who we want to be friends with. And if we want to try the power of modern prediction, all we need to do is reach to our smartphones and pose a few questions to Siri. That app uses information that it knows about us, as well as information that it gathers from all around the internet. It makes predictions about what we ask. Sometimes it even predicts what we're going to be asking, even before we ask it. And so if there's one thing that you take out of this talk, is that with data becoming so abundantly available, we can now use algorithms to make predictions about nearly everything. Now let me give you an example from life science. This is a DNA sequencing machine. It now costs $1,000 and takes about a week to sequence a human genome. Now, advancements in sequencing techniques have led to an ever-increasing amount of data that we store in our databases. However, our ability to collect this data does not necessarily mean that we can actually understand it. So we use algorithms to make predictions about this data. For instance, we can now predict whether a genetic mutation may lead to a disease or whether a particular protein, which is a DNA product, could be used as a promising target for a medical drug. The field is called bioinformatics, although this field is focused around very practical questions that have real-world implications, I'm going to tell you today how we can use predictions in the world of fiction. And in my next example, let's assume that you happen to be a data scientist who is a little bit too obsessed with a series of fantasy books. And you know that the author of the books really likes to kill some of your favorite characters. You actually know that the author of the books told you not to get too attached to any of the characters because those could be killed off at any given moment. Now, can you please guess which books I'm talking about? <laughs> That's right. It is A Song of Ice and Fire, the story of Game of Thrones. Now, let's say that you just finished reading the last published book of Game of Thrones, and you found out that this very likable character, this one right here, <laughs> uh, his name is Jon Snow, by the way. He's a pretty central character to the, uh, to, the, to the story. You just found out that he has been seemingly killed. You're not sure that whether he's, he's dead or alive. He's been seemingly killed. And now you're left wondering, is he really dead? What about my other favorite characters? Are they going to die too? What's a fan to do? Well, obviously, one thing that you can do is just wait for the next book to come out and ho hope for the best. Or you can try to use modern prediction to figure out what is coming up next. And so this is exactly what we set out to do. This group, this very fine group of uh, 40 students and four mentors, have used a set of algorithms called machine learning algorithms to predict what would happen in the upcoming yet unpublished book of Game of Thrones. And their main question was simple. Which of the characters in the story is likely to die next? Now, I'm sure that you want to know what we discovered, but first I want to dedicate a couple moments and explain what I mean about uh, prediction by machine learning. Machine learning is a subfield of computer science in which we let algorithms learn from an input data set. These algorithms independently find rules and patterns in the, uh, in the data that we as humans cannot obviously and simply detect. Now, it's important to, uh, to stress the word independent here, because this is a very critical concept. The, we do not tell the algorithms what is important and what is not. Instead, the algorithms need to find this, uh, this on their own, making the learning process free from human preconceptions. Now, once we found the rules and patterns in the data, and we call these in machine learning models, we use these models on unseen data set to make new inferences and predictions. Now, simplifying things a bit, there are really three pillars uh, that we need in order to successfully apply machine learning. The first one is the data to learn from. A data could be any publicly available uh, data set. Uh, data has become much more abundantly available and uh, in some cases even cheaper to produce. The second pillar is the technical know-how. This means uh, what algorithms are we going to be using? 
how we're going to be, to be using them, and how to best calibrate them, and how to interpret the results. The third pillar is the question that we ask the data. Now, this probably is the trickiest part of the process, because it's always, uh, there's always an art of figuring out what could be asked and what could be answered by our data. The question that could be asked, it could be asked out of a, um, you know, a very complicated, with a, a complicated uh, scientific uh, impact, or could be asked out of our uh, own personal interest. And so in order for us to be able to answer our who is likely to die next uh, question, we first needed to collect the data. In biology, we rely on data sets that we know that hold information to be verified. For instance, the omium data set that we see over here holds correlations between genetic mutations and diseases. So if we want to predict a disease, we just use this data set as an input data set to our machine lear learning algorithms, and then the machine learning algorithm can help us predict diseases. For our Game of Thrones project, we also needed a, a data set of verified information. So one thing that we could do is obviously read all the books and start typing in all the information. Or otherwise, we could use the wiki of Ice and Fire, which luckily has already all the information that the fan have loaded online and made available uh, for us. And we use this as our primary data source for this project. Now, once we started aggregating the data, we all of a sudden found new things about a story we thought we already knew. And there was plenty to discover, since there are plenty of characters in the story. As a matter of fact, there are 2,048 characters in the story. On the HBO show, for instance, on each episode, on average, there are 34 characters that appear there. And four of these characters are newly appeared characters, newly introduced characters. Sometimes the character is introduced in, the, in an episode and killed off in the same episode. <laughs> we also found out that there's twice as many men in Game of Thrones as there are women. But being a man in Game of Thrones is more dangerous. <laughs> it seems that the men die at a much higher rate, but, well, the ladies are rather safe. Being a noble in Game of Thrones does not equal safety. So George Martin, the author of the books, tend to kill highborn nobles at the same rate that he kills lowborn commoners. And congratulations, if you hit the age of 16 Game of Thrones, your chances of meeting a violent death decreases immensely. <laughs> now, obviously, all this information is very interesting, but we were still after our question, who is likely to die next um, for the 1,400 characters that were still considered to be alive in the books? So for each of these characters, we collected information about their age, their gender, their marital status, whether their spouse is alive or dead, and how central the character is to the story. Overall, we looked at 24 such details that in machine learning are called features. And we found that those features are the most important one that may determine the likelihood of death for the, uh, for the characters. For instance, we found that uh, belonging to a certain noble house may increase the chance of a, of a character to die. However, just looking at this one feature in isolation does not necessarily mean that the character would die. Instead, it is always the combination of the 24 features that makes the determination of the likelihood of death. Now, we use those features as input to a machine learning algorithm called a support vector machine. The support vector machine can differentiate between dead characters and alive characters. If the support vector machine finds that a certain character is more similar to the dead characters, then it just assigns it a higher likelihood of death, as we can see that it did over here with this green guy right here. And overall, uh, this algorithm has uh, correctly labeled 74% of, of the characters in the story. And we calculated this value as a proportion between the correctly labeled characters and the entire pool of characters. Now, one of the most surprising predictions that we made was about Jon Snow. You may remember him from a few slides ago. The whole, well, the whole world was speculating whether Jon survived uh, season five. Our algorithm said that he should have never died. <laughs> and luckily for us, <laughs> we saw John being resurrected at the beginning of season six.
Another prediction that we made was about King Tommen. You might have seen him before. Both our algorithm and a character witch called Maggie both put him at the top of the, of the death list. Our algorithm predicted him at 97% chance that he is going to die. And at the end of season six, this is the moment when the prediction actually came true. Now, although our algorithm was pretty accurate, we had 74% uh, accuracy, it was by no means perfect. So it was a lot of fun for us to keep track throughout the past season and see which of our death predictions came true and which did not. And you can find this analysis on our website where you can see which of our predictions uh, did not come true, which did come true, and which did not yet come true. <laughs> and so it was very rewarding to see um, the amount of attention that we got from both the media and the public. This project ended up being featured in over 2,000 media outlets across the globe. This had a reach of 1.2 billion people. We used this massive exposure to explain what machine learning was all about. That with data, technical know-how, machine learning can answer important questions and even predict the future. So remember, data are the key to understanding and solving many of the problems that impact our lives. And by letting computers learn from data, we can now make the world a much more smarter and even much more predictable place. I invite you to go and challenge machine learning with the questions that interest you the most. Or you can just share the questions with me and my team members. We're always excited about finding more about the world, whether it's real or fictional. Thank you. Thank you.